Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Get Down with Graphic Novels. I'm Sarah Hunter, editor of the Books for Youth and Graphic Novel sections at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Links to today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble accessing these materials, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Last but not least, Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Kaylee Flagg, Marketing Associate, Associate with Simon & Schuster, Morgana Santilli, Sales and Marketing Coordinator at Yen Press, Christopher Johns, Sales and Marketing Director at Tuttle, Maisha Johnson, Manager of Educational and Event Marketing at Scholastic, and Victoria Stapleton, Executive Director of School and Library Marketing at Little Brown Books for Young Readers, along with LBYR author Ira Marks. First, we'll hear from Kaylee Flagg. Kaylee is a Children's Library Marketing Associate on the Education and Library team at Simon & Schuster. For all four years of middle school, she won most books checked out at her library, so you could say her career is the ultimate expression of her childhood ambitions. When she's reading, she is usually, uh, when she isn't reading, she's usually running in Central Park, attempting a new recipe, or following random dogs down the street. Thanks for being here today, Kaylee. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining all of us today. Thank you to SLJ for having us. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, you'll see my email here on this screen, so if you have any follow-up questions or are interested in further discussion about anything, feel free to reach out. And I'm going to get started today by talking about just a few of our little Simon graphic novels, who are, which are perfect for those early readers who are starting to get interested in the graphic novel format. So in the seventh book of our beloved Super Turbo series, Super Turbo meets the catnappers, Super Turbo is excited to go home with a student for the weekend, but unfortunately his weekend is an all smooth sailing when he encounters a pair of evil cats. Pup Detectives Battle of the Bands shows our favorite gang getting a bit musical while solving the mystery of a town ghost who wants to put a stop to music forever. And in Dragon Kingdom of Renly, The Shattered Shore, Ruskin, Cinder, Groth, and Rope join the entire Dragon Kingdom on a trip to the Shattered Shore to say goodbye to Villanelle, the witch dragon who is both an enemy and a friend. Next up, we have our Ready to Read graphic series, who are great for emerging readers who might not feel prepared for a full chapter book or just those who love art. So as you can see, we have different ages and different levels of our Ready to Read series here. Yum Fest is the best, sees Nugget and Dog excited about Yum Fest, the coolest fair around. But this year, a unicorn puppy tries to spoil all of the fun. Can Nugget and Dog use Ketchup, their club that spreads kindness, empathy, and more, to save the day? Judge Kim and the Kids Court brings us the case of the missing bicycles, another one of the inspirational Judge Kim's neighborhood cases. Up in her treehouse court, Judge Kim listens to witnesses and evidence gathered by her friends before determining what's fair and what's not. Lastly, Geraldine Poo and her cat hat too sees Geraldine learn to love her hair and her own unique style just in time for picture day. Now I wanna talk about some of our graphic novel series adaptations. Here we have some of our most beloved middle grade series that might be even better as graphic novels. They're the same great stories you know, just accompanied by gorgeous art. After pulling a magical thunder thunderbolt from a stone, 10-year-old Zeus goes on the adventure of a lifetime in this first installment of the Heroes in Training series. Armed with his trusty thunderbolt, Zeus is on a quest to rescue his fellow Olympians from the evil Cronus and a journey to fulfill his destiny as the king of the gods. 
Our beloved Goddess Girl series is now available as a graphic novel as well. And this first book sees Athena take the stage. When she's whisked away to Mount Olympus Academy, Athena worries about fitting in and dealing with her dad, Zeus. Luckily, she meets the Goddess Girls and finds the best friends she's ever had. And many of you might be familiar with our Cupcake Diary series. And this great graphic novel version tells the classic story of the formation of the Cupcake Club and the development of the sweet middle school friend group we all know and love. Lastly, we have Creepover, Truth or Dare. During a round of Truth or Dare, Abby Miller confesses her crush on Jake Chilson. The only people who know her secret are her friends at the sleepover and whoever sent her a text message in the middle of the night warning her to stay away from Jake or else. Soon, some very creepy things start happening to Abby. Someone definitely wants to keep her away from Jake. Is it a jealous classmate or, as Abby begins to suspect, could it be a ghost? Now I'd like to talk to you about our beloved Dork Diaries series, which many of you have probably heard of. As you can see here, there's a lot of them. This New York Times bestselling middle grade series follows Nikki Maxwell as she chronicles her life through text and art, her move to a new school, her battles with Queen Bee McKenzie, and her zany adventures with her BFFs, Chloe and Zoe, by her side. And here's the rest of the Dork Diaries series. And you never know, we might be doing some more with Dork in the future. And now I want to chat about our amazing middle grade spy school series, which has lent itself incredibly well to a graphic novel adaptation. Ben Ripley might only be in middle school, but he's already pegged his dream job, CIA or bust. When he's recruited to an elite magnet school, he's entirely shocked to discover that the school is actually a front for a junior CIA academy. Through a series of hilarious misadventures, Ben realizes he might actually be a halfway decent spy if he can survive all the attempts being made on his life. With action-packed, eye-catching art, join Ben as he goes through the crazy ups and downs of middle school with a twist. Now we have an original middle grade graphic novel. Isla Island is a stunning, wordless story that follows a young girl in the 1960s who immigrates from Cuba to the United States and must redefine what home means to her. Nothing about Marisol's new life in cold, gray Brooklyn feels like home, not the language, school, or even her foster parents. But Marisol starts to realize that home isn't always a place and finding her way can be as simple as staying true to herself. Now we're celebrating over 40 years of the modern classic Vinicula with this fantastic graphic novelization that will send a shiver down your spine and leave you howling with laughter. Harold the dog and Chester the cat must find out the truth about the newest pet in the Monroe household, a suspicious looking bunny with unusual habits and fangs. Could this innocent seeming rabbit actually be a vampire? Experience the chills and thrills of this classic middle grade scary story in this new graphic novel format. If you love she and the Princess of Power, Dave Pilkey's Dog Man, or just great middle grade graphic novels, I'd like you to meet Barb. Barb is a berserker, one of a group of warriors sworn to protect the land of Bailiwick from the scourge of monsters that plagues it. But the fearsome crew seem to have met their match in the nefarious witch head. It's up to Barb to defend the land, and on the way, she'll battle vampire goat fiends, snot goblins, and a giant with serious foot odor issues. But don't mention it to him, he's very sensitive about it. Luckily, she's got her best friend, Pork Chop the Yeti, to help her. And lastly, here are a few more great graphic novels to keep in mind for readers of all ages. Sword of Super is a funny, lighthearted, new middle grade graphic novel series about a boy struggling with new superpowers and middle school. That We just had this one at ALA and it was very popular, so I definitely recommend it. Lumberjackula is a hilarious middle grade that follows a half vampire, half lumberjack boy who feels torn between his parents and just wants to be a dancer. How Do Meerkats Order Pizza is an uproariously funny and charmingly illustrated nonfiction book. Author Brooke Barker of Sad Animal Facts introduces readers to incredible animals and the bizarre things human scientists do to understand them. And set in 2005, the gorgeously illustrated, funny and honest Forest Hills Bootleg Society follows four teens who stumble into an illicit anime DVD burning business that shakes up their conservative small town and their friendship. 
And that's everything from us today. I hope you guys saw something you liked. And like I said, my email is here. Here's all of our socials. So if you have any questions or want to talk about anything more, I'm always here. So thank you. Thanks so much, Kaylee. Now we'll hear from Morgana Santilli. Morgana is the sales and marketing coordinator at Yen Press. She is a former comic shop manager and buyer and always particularly loved helping readers find their new favorite series. Other than reading manga, Morgana enjoys drinking lots of tea, snuggling with her two black cats, and collecting too many books for her toddler's personal library. Me too. Take it away, Morgana. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Morgana. Um, like has already been mentioned, I am the sales and marketing coordinator at Yen Press. I'm really excited to be here today and to talk with you about some of our new and upcoming books. Next slide, please. All right, first of all, I think a lot of people have been waiting for this. Uh, Enemies is the newest installment in the Barry Brook Middle School series by Svetlana Shvokova. Um, if Barry Brook Middle School doesn't sound familiar, it's awkward, brave, crush. Um, this is a wonderful middle grade series. We're really, really excited to have another installment available finally. Um, this will be coming in uh, trade paperback and hardcover, just like the, uh, the other ones. And this one follows uh, Felicity, who has shown up in previous volumes of the series. This one focuses on her and her relationship, her kind of competitive relationship with her younger sister, um, who you know is always teasing her about how she doesn't finish anything. Um, so she enters this contest, a costume contest, um, to kind of prove that she can do something right. And in the midst of all this work she's doing, kind of butts heads with you know, some close friends um, and has to kind of figure out what, what friendship really means. Um, this is coming out in September of this year and we do have a digital review copy up on Edelweiss. So you can definitely check that out um, to get a, a sneak peek at, at what's to come soon. Uh, next slide, please. The beginning after the end is uh, a print adaptation um, of the hit web comic series uh, on Top Us. Uh, this is a fantasy series where a king is reincarnated um, into a new life and he wants to kind of prove that he can, um, you know, live his life to the fullest this time instead of squandering what he had, you know, his life that he had in the past. Um, of course, nothing is ever that simple. Uh, so this piece in his new world is kind of hiding something more sinister. Um, once again, this is a hugely popular uh, webcomic series based on a novel. Um, and the novel, the, the web novel has 14.4 million views uh, and the comic, the webcomic 13.3 million webcomic views on top of us for a combined readership of around 28 million. So people are reading this, they are aware of it and they are really excited to be able to get their hands on this um, print edition because this is the first time it'll be in print in English. Um, this is coming out very soon in August. Uh, it's good for kind of the teenage set, age 13 and up, uh, and it will be full color. Next slide, please. Why Rayliana Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion is another very popular webcomic series. This is a Korean webtoon um, that uh, follows a very common trope right now of a, a young woman dying and being reincarnated as a character, in this case, from a novel. And this character in the novel, her death kind of serves as a catalyst for the story's events. But because she has read this novel before reincarnating, she realizes that she needs to avoid her death. And she kind of, um, you know, runs away and hides in the Duke's mansion to avoid uh, the, the person she's betrothed to, who's, who's kind of, you know, creepy and, and plotting against her. So this is a really fun um, kind of romance series. Great for, again, the teenage set. This is also in full color. Um, it's really, really beautiful artwork. And again, a lot of people who have read this previously uh, on you know webcomic apps are very excited to get this print edition in their hands. This one actually came out a couple weeks ago, so it is currently available. Next slide, please. Embrace Your Size, My Own Body Positivity. This is one I am personally pretty excited about. This is actually a memoir. Um, the author kind of talks about her experience um, with bulimia and body image issues, um, and ultimately 
kind of goes through this journey to acceptance of her body and the body positivity. Um, this is something that would be really appealing to um, readers who love manga like some of the memoir manga we've published secretly I've been suffering about being sexless or I don't know how to give birth um, or also like um, my lesbian experience with loneliness and, and similar kind of hard hitting memoirs like that. Um, it is uh, appropriate for younger ages than a lot of those books. This is good for 13 and up. Um, and this is coming out uh, in September. Um, again, I'm really excited about this. When we announced it, it got a lot of publicity and people were very excited. So I think um, you know, good, good things are on the way for this title. Next slide, please. Josie the Tiger and the Fish. This is a manga adaptation of a short story that originally came out in 1984. Um, this short story inspired uh, two live action films, one in Japanese and one in Korean. Um, and since then has become a, an anime film as well in, in 2020. It had a very successful theatrical run here in the United States. Um, and we have published the short story in a collection as well. We're very excited um, for this manga adaptation to be available in English as well. As you can see, the artwork is very beautiful and very unique. Um, and it gives readers, uh, you know, fans of the original sh story and the films, uh, kind of a new perspective on this story about a young woman who lives her life in a wheelchair and kind of makes a connection with, uh, with a college student and kind of, you know, comes out of her shell a little bit. Um, this is coming out in August also and is also appropriate for a teenage audience. Um, another one that I'm, I'm super excited for. It just looks really lovely. And uh, yeah, that one that one's coming out soon. Um, that's uh, next slide, please. Thank you. That's it um, for me for now. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you found some things that pique your interest. Uh, once again, the Enemies uh, arc is on Edelweiss. And if you take a look at our Edelweiss, we have a lot of other um, digital review copies available. So please check it out. Thank you. Thanks so much, Morgana. We'll now hear from Christopher Jones. Christopher is Tuttle's sales and marketing director where he's worked now for 17 years. Recently, he helped launch new editions of Filipino supernatural graphic novels and fiction, bringing this burgeoning movement to Western audiences. Prior to Tuttle, he was director of special sales at Abrams. The floor is yours, Christopher. Hi there, everybody. Um, good to sort of see you. I, I'm glad we all got to meet a little bit in ALA. Hopefully you came by my booth and we're able to get some of our graphic novels in person um, for yourself. If you did not come by, um, we do have them available on uh, Edelweiss. So just go to our homepage where you can request any DRC you want from our graphic novel uh, and uh, manga and fiction line of books that I'm gonna talk about today. Um, and the first slide I'm gonna show you um, coming up is some recent releases that sort of gives you the breadth of what we do at Tuttle. Um, we were founded in uh, 1948 in both Vermont and Japan, of course, and we have been um, bridging East and West ever since then. So we always are trying to bring Eastern culture to Western hands to read. So you'll see a good swath on this of new, new releases that we have from After Lombana, which is our first foray into Filipino graphic novels that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, Soseki Natsumi's I Am a Cat, which is a classic novel from the 1900s that's now in manga for the first time. And then Uniquely Ch Japan by Abby Denson, who actually was in our booth at ALA and uh, did a signing for us. And this is sort of a genre that we've sort of decided to sort of own, which is basically travel meets comic books or comic books meets travel, however you want to look at it. So it's a wonderful book looking at what you can find in Japan. Um, so the first title I really want to talk about is uh, Tokyo Rose, Zero Hour. Um, this is a nonfiction title by Andre Fantino. Kate Tasno did the illustrations and Janice Chang did the actual hand lettering. This story, I did not understand before I heard about this novel. I My understanding of Tokyo Rose is a very preliminary, bad Japanese woman who uh, infiltrated uh, the troops, um, the American troops, and misled them, which of course is not the story at all. This is actually a very heroic woman named Eva uh, Tagori, um, who was torn between, between two countries, and this book sort of very well puts together a case of her wrongdoings by governments, both on Japan and the U.S. Um, 
It is really a riveting story. And if you go to the next slide, you can see some of the illustrations. Basically, it re revolves around that she was stuck in Japan during World War II, forced to go on the radio by the Japanese government. They try to make her deny her American citizenship. She did not. She finally returned to the United States and then was scapegoated by the American government to be a traitor um, because she had this radio show. That was not the case at all, she, but she did serve time seven years and then was finally pardoned by Gerald Ford many, many years later. So this is really basically, unfortunately, what's happening still today that you know, a, a citizen is wrongly accused and becomes sort of a uh, emblematic of Asian hate. And so unfortunately, this title is very relevant right now. Um, we we have the fortune of actually having one of the two authors of, they call us enemy Scott, um, Stephen Scott, who wrote it along with uh, George Takai to give us a very nice endorsement. This is a nonfiction title. It's all ages, like all our graphic novels and manga in, in this list. It could be for high school student, absolutely, but we do put it into all ages. Um, the next title, um, and I mentioned this briefly before, we've started to bring into uh, our foray doing uh, graphic novels from the Philippines. What had happened probably about 20 years ago is a new wave of writers started to write in English in the Philippines about their mythology because they realized that most of the stories, folk tales they had learned are really from Grammy and Auntie, but never had been put down onto paper. So their mythology had never really been sort of um, you know, cataloged. So the whole new generation of graphic novel writers decided to embark on sort of describing the world of mythology that still is very much present today. Like these superstitions and monsters that they have are still part of their vernacular. It's not some, you know, wild Halloween costume that you put on once a year. They believe that some of these spirits are still around us right now. And the first novel to come out, graphic novel to come out, is this very one right here by, by Arnold R.A. that started it all off. It was the first book to win a the first comic book to win the National Book Award in the Philippines. If you go to the next slide, you can see some of the slides of what it's actually about. It's basically a, a, um, a college student who is researching sociology and anthropology and gets sunk into a world of understanding the actual monsters and demons and good spirits that they, you, that you could possibly encounter um, that have been, been passed over time. So this is really a landmark book um, it is coming back out now. Uh, I think it's coming out in September for us. So there's great excitement about this. A lot of people have been asking me about film rights for this, actually. So you can definitely tell that there's something going on here. And then the next two titles come from a whole slew of authors and illustrators. The biggest name on this is one of the authors, which is Budget Tan, who is the creator of the first anime uh, Filipino show on Netflix that came out last year called Tresse that has not gotten a lot of good press already. Um, and he, along with some other, uh, um, some other authors and illustrators, have come forward to a, do a two-volume set of a um, book about understanding the monsters of the Philippines. So if we go to the next slide, you can see some of the monsters that they came up, this guide to the monsters of the Philippines. So there's sort of a retro book on it from the 1800s called The Lost Journal of Alejandro Pardo, which is sort of de depicting a Spanish explorer who comes to the Philippines in the 1800s and his journal that he does. And then his descendants, much many years later, decided to write another book called The Black Bestiary, which is modern day beasts that you would find in the Philippines. So these are really a great little guides. You can definitely see the artwork is influenced by um, Brian Froud, especially for uh, the Lost Journal of Alejandro Pardo. Then finally, um, in the uh, Filipino uh, mythology series that we have is this wonderful anthology of the best Filipino writers writing today, including Budget Tan, including Eliza Victoria, who did our After Lombada, compiled by Paulo Chinchaminko, excuse me, for Paulo for me mispronouncing your name. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you can see some of the interiors. It's mainly a reading book, but there are some illustrations. There's one graphic novel story, but really this is the best of the best of what's coming out of the Philippines right now. And besides the Tresse, um, you know, anime series that I've mentioned before that is really sort of pushing this whole movement forward. Also, Neil Gaiman has met, made many a tweet about how these writers are really the, the bomb out there and they're going head to head against 
a lot of the mythological mythological writers that are writing today. So I think we have you know a, a burgeoning movement that's going on. If you go on to uh, I don't want to give uh, too much props to another publisher, but Publishers Weekly just did a nice overview on the fanatic. Um, which interviewed me, but a lot of the writers mainly and gave you a very good history of how Filipino graphic novels have evolved to this very day. So definitely check that out on The Fanatic. Then finally, on a pr present day uh, comic book, we have Helena Filipina, which is just a lovely rom-com in a, in a graphic novel, also by Arnold, Arnold R.A., who did our mythology class. You see a lovely review by uh, Publishers Weekly. If you go to the next slide, you can see some of the charming illustrations. And it's about a, a Filipino-American woman who comes to Manila, and she enlists a very dour, surly uh, film critic um, named Chris, who doesn't like being Filipino, doesn't like to be in Manila, but he, is, he, is, he has to take her around and show her around. And in the process, comes to love Filipino culture a little bit more, Manila and, and her. So they have sort of one crazy night in Manila where they run around and find all the wonderful things in politic culture that you could find in Manila. So really a fun, you know, very straight ahead rom-com. It's like I said, these are all ages. There's nothing salacious about this book at all, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's 15 and up and definitely for adults as well. Then, as I mentioned before, we do a lot of travel comic books also, too, and this is our first uh, uh, one of our recent foray into this area, which is by Audrey Nicklin, who is hails out of Kentucky. Um, she is an artist and had the fortune, if you want to go to the next slide, to go to uh, Japan for 10 days because her husband was working there. So she realized this might be her only chance to pack everything in. So she went to like 10 uh, countries, I mean, 10 cities total in this thing and basically journaled it all in a wonderful uh, book. All the highs and lows that she set, uh, saw there along with the techniques that you can do as, a, as an artist to actually have your own journal. So a wonderful book. And then I'm gonna briefly go through my last couple of slides here. Um, a little bit off the beaten path, but I think this is very apropos too. The number one reason that children in high school, high school students take Japanese in high school is to learn manga. And I think that goes on and on and on throughout time. So we as a publisher of Asian uh, language books have two books to teach you, if you go to the next slide, really how to learn the um, Japanese. And if you go to the next slide, you can sort of see those, uh, what you're gonna learn in this, you'll learn the manga, uh, how to read the manga, you, there's going to be a manga story in there, and there's also going to be the language that you'll learn through many, many exercises. So I think this is a really good all ages book to learn how to read manga 16 and up. And then the final three slides that we'll just slowly, just quickly go through, are we do a few titles on how to draw manga, written by people practicing manga in Japan right now with over 600 illustrations, if not a thousand. So these are very basic books about learning the ups and downs, the ins and outs of how to be a good artist. Um, the next title is about furries, which is the anthropomorphic eyes of humans and uh, animals together. Very, very popular. And this gives you a lot of insight on that. And then the final one is about faces and how to draw faces uh, manga style. So really a good um, sidebar to, to have with your manga collections because um, it will get people to do their own manga at the same time as reading them as well. So that is it for me. Like I said, all our stuff is on Edelweiss. Um, you can request our DRCs. You'll be part of our Friday newsletter where there's a lot of stuff to win and um, be part of. So uh, thank you so much for all your time today and enjoy our books. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Christopher. Next up is Maisha Johnson. Maisha currently works at Scholastic Incorporated in the Trade Marketing Department, where she is the Manager of Educational and Event Marketing. With over 15 years of publishing experience beginning at Scholastic as a marketing assistant, Maisha has worked her way through the ranks from Marketing Coordinator to Assistant Manager and Project Manager. After working at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt as manager of events for five years, Maisha has just recently returned to Scholastic Children's Books where she affectionately refers to her journey as returning home. Her love of books and enthusiasm for working with authors is what keeps her going. Take it away, Maisha. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for um, your time. I'm so excited to be able to highlight some of Scholastic's fall and summer graphic novels. Um, since 2005, we've been championing graphic uh, and print graphics um, and just seeking out empowering groundbreaking visual art 
authors, publishing diverse and vibrant stories, instilling the love of reading that lasts a lifetime. From real-time drama like Raina Telegomaya Smile to Dave Pilkey's irreverent yet insightful Dog Man to more recent titles like um, Varian Johnson and Shannon Wright's Twins and Kat Fajardo's Miss Quinces. We really feel like Miss Quinces graphic really graphics really draws in every kind of reader. Next slide. So today um, you'll have the pleasure of not only from hearing from me, but some of Scholastic stars like Shauna Grant, author and illustrator of Mimi and the Cutie Catastrophe, and Gabriella Epstein, who is the illustrator of Invisible, who will be joining us via pre-recorded video. Today, we will start kicking it off with Shauna, who, as you see on the screen, is the author and illustrator of Mimi and the Cutie Catastrophe. So I will go to the next slide and let you hear her video. Hi there, my name is Shauna J. Grant, and I am the creator of the book Mimi and the Cutie Catastrophe, which is an early reader's graphic novel. And it's the story about a little girl named Mimi who's worried that people think she's just a little bit too cute. So with the help of her best friend, a magical talking dog named Penelope, Mimi explores all the ways that she can be more than just cute by transforming into different super fun outfits. She tries to be stronger, she tries to be smarter, she tries to be cooler, but the more Mimi changes herself, the more she realizes what she really needs to do is to be true to herself and true to her friends. I grew up in New York City, specifically the Bronx, and I've always wanted to create stories that reflected that, you know, with like a dose of magic. Um, while working on Mimi, I was inspired by my childhood of playing with my cousins and all the other little kids that lived in my apartment building, and I thought it was so important to show black and brown kids experiencing a joyful, magical life. I was also inspired by my lifelong love of Japanese anime and manga and how much I loved stories about magical girls. So I'm really hoping that Mimi and the Cutie Catastrophe can be kind of like a starting point for other kids to learn about those stories that inspired me to become an artist. So. I hope this book inspires kids to find the magic in themselves, just as Mimi does. Mimi and the Cutie Catastrophe is a part of our graphics chapters, which are ideal for books for beginning and newly independent readers. They have approachable page counts, easy to follow paneling and artwork that supports text comprehension, and these engaging stories with unforgettable characters help children become lifelong readers. Next up, Bug Scouts Camp Out. This book was written and illustrated by Mike Lowry and it is in stores October 4th, 2022. The next slide is just some uh, visuals of what you'll find inside the chapter book. In this hilarious series, you can go, yeah. In this hilarious series from New York Times bestselling author, Mike Lowry, you will meet Bug Scouts, Doug, Abby, Josh, and Luna. As they, set off, as they set off on their next adventure. This time, they're going on a big camping trip to earn their camping bug badge. Everyone, except for Josh, is ready for a fun night of roasting s'mores, singing by the campfire, and telling spooky ghost stories. But suddenly, they start to hear eerie noises. Is there a crazy monster, lur monster lurking in the woods with them? Will Bug Scouts be able to spend the whole night in the tent? With laugh out loud humor, puns galore, kid friendly artwork, and endless heart, Bug Scouts is the perfectly perfect early graphic novel series for enthusiasts of Dogman, Norwal and Jelly, and Castronauts. So get on your hiking boots, put on your binoculars, and head into the wacky adventures with the Bug Scouts. Next slide, please. The Tryout by Christina Sunterbach is illustrated by jo Joanna Kako and is available in stores on September 6th, 2022. 
from two-time Newberry honoree and Kirkus winner, Christina Sundavak, and stellar new talent, Joanna Kako, comes a high stakes, highly relatable graphic novel about courage and competition, friendship and belonging, and learning to feel comfortable in your own skin. Perfect for fans of New Kids, Roller Girl, and Real Friends. Trying out for middle school cheerleader means performing in the giant school gym with the whole school watching and risking total humiliation. If Christina can't make it through this, she can't make it through anything. As one of the only Asian American kids in her small Texas town, Christina just wants to fit in. Luckily, her best friend, Megan, who is an Iranian American, can totally relate. The two girls have always been inseparable and relish creating elaborate fantasy worlds together. But middle school is a reality check. And suddenly, popularity is, the more, is more important than play and pretend. When cheerleading trials are announced, Christina and Megan literally jump at the chance to join the squad. But does fitting in actually equal belonging? Will they survive the terrifying tryouts? And most importantly, will, will their friendship withstand the pressures of heated competition and rivalry? Hilarious and heartfelt, the tryout is Christina Sundervat's personal story, sure to make you laugh, cry, and cheer. Make sure you pick it up in October and September. Next up, we have Freestyle by Gail Galligan, on sale October 18th, 2022. From New York Times bestselling author Gail Galligan is a hot, is fun, is a fun, high energy graphic novel about friendship, family, and the last hurrahs of middle school. I'm sure we all can relate. Corey's dance crew is getting ready for a major competition. It's the last one before they graduate eighth grade and go their separate ways to high school all over New York City. So they have to make it count. The group starts to have problems as their new crew captain gets increasingly intense about nailing the routines and things go from bad to worse when Corey's parents ground him for not taking his grades seriously. He gets stuck with a new tutor sooner who he dismisses as a boring nerd until he catches her secret, secretly practicing cool yo-yo tricks. Corey wants to learn the art of yo-yo too. And as his friendship with Suna grows, he ends up missing practice and, and bailing on his crew, and they are not happy about it. With mounting pressure coming from all sides, how is Corey supposed to balance the expectation of his parents, school, dance, and his new friend? Pick up this book in October 18th to find out. Next slide, please. Leon the Extra Extraordinary written and illustrated by Lamar Nichols. Leon is an ordinary kid who becomes extraordinary when he fights a supervillain to save his school. In the city where Leon lives, superheroes and supervillains are commonplace. So how does an ordinary kid like Leon, who has no superpowers himself, become the superhero he wants to be? When all his classmates suddenly become obsessed with a new phone app that turns him into zombies, Leon gets his chance to prove that using his brain and following his heart can really save the day. Equal parts New Kids and The Incredibles, the first graphic novel in this action-packed, heartfelt, and joyously funny series by Jamar Nichols reminds readers that when it comes to becoming a hero, you just need to believe in yourself. Next slide, please. Last but certainly not least is our, is our own illustrator, Gabriella Epstein, Epstein in, uh, of Invisible, joining us via video conference to share with us how beautifully she created the story, Invisible. Hi, I'm Gabriella Epstein. I am the illustrator of the upcoming graphic novel, Invisible for Scholastic Graphics and written by Christina Diaz Gonzalez. If y'all don't know what it's about, it's a contemporary retelling of The Breakfast Club, but with a Latinx twist. Each of the five main characters comes from a different Latinx background, and they all have to kind of overcome their own differences to work together and help a stranger in need. And so what's cool about the story is we actually get to follow each of them and get their spin on the story, and we get to watch each character kind of grow into themselves and prove to be more than the stereotypes that are foisted upon them uh, by others, whether as a jock, a nerd, or what have you. 
And Invisible is also the first bilingual graphic novel being released by Scholastic, which is something that I'm very proud of because each main character has varying levels of proficiency with English and Spanish, and that actually creates both internal and external struggles within the narrative. So that's something that uh, we really wanted to accurately portray to the reader. As such, we on the design team worked hard to create a new bubbling format that translates the English to the Spanish and vice versa and makes for a seamless reading experience of, uh, for readers of both languages and hopefully provide an easy visual guide for those who are trying to maybe learn a bit of the other language. I hope this book is you know, a fun read for everybody, but especially hope that it paves the way for more comics to be used for ESL purposes because I just believe comics are a medium uniquely suited for teaching language because you've got the textual input and the visual input right there mixed together in just such a unique and powerful way. And on my end, growing up, my fluency in Spanish tended to fluctuate with my connection to my Chilean family. So I kind of understand that feeling of not quite knowing where you fit in as a result of that, which is a running theme throughout the book. So I would hope that uh, young Latinx readers who pick the story up may come away feeling a bit more comfortable about themselves and how they identify regardless of their language proficiency. So yeah, that's what I got. And uh, thank you all for reading and I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. And finally, uh, Scholastic's Power of Story initiative is just to help everybody's story to be heard by building equitable, book equitable bookshelves. If you're interested in finding some of those stories, the website is listed here. We ask you to just go on and check out some of those incredible stories. Thank you so much for your time today and your support of graphic novels. Thank you so much, Maisha. Finally, we'll hear from Victoria Stapleton. Victoria is the Executive Director of School and Library Marketing at Little Brown Books for Young Readers, where she has worked since 2005. She honestly believes that she has the very best job in publishing. Thank you for being here today, Victoria. Hello, everyone from Brooklyn, where evidently DHL is about to come to my house. So let's see how this is gonna go. I am so excited to be here with you today. LBYR was slower to get in on the graphic novel craze, but I think we are selecting some truly amazing books to share with everybody. And I'm excited to start the presentation today with an interview with one of my actual real life favorites, Ira Marks. Okay, so let's see if we can get Ira and myself on screen. We can do it. <laughs> we can do it. We have the buttons and the technology. I'm excited. Ira, hi. Hi, Victoria. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ira Marks. This is uh, an actual thing. I've always said Todd Parr is love. I will say that Ira Marks is fun. And I was really excited to choose him today. Ira, you've been working in graphic novels and graphics and comics uh, a long time. I have to say uh, that I believe it's Harvey Pelican and Company. Wow. Uh, I know, I'm sorry. I got deep a cut. little, uh, it's a deep cut. Harvey Pelican and Company, Assorted Anatomy for each and every occasion uh, is a wonderful story. You got started actually doing things in uh, magazines like Weird Tales. And I think this is an expression of your cinematic mindset and your cinematic interest. So, I think that's extended into your novels, uh, Shark Summer, and we'll talk about Spirit Week in a minute, but I don't wanna say why graphic novels, but what is it about working in the graphic novel format or the graphic format that is really appealing to you as a storyteller? Yeah, well, I think I, I gotta just kind of go over my origin story a little bit, even farther back than the Harvey Pelican, because just listening to all these great books being talked about today, it made me like nostalgic for the era I grew up in. Even though there were so few options, um, the things that really made comics magic to me were um, the, the books I encountered, like finding Art Spiegelman's Mouse, uh, an intense book to, to discover as a kid. It was a Pulitzer Prize winner when I was a kid. So I, I picked it up. I was handed it by a teacher. I watched Jeff Smith's Bone happen in real time. I was buying those individual issues as that story just went on through my middle school, high school career and ended right as I completed college. And then it became like the cornerstone of a whole industry. So I just feel like I was there watching these creators um, just sort of appear out of seemingly nowhere and just enter my school library. And it, it just felt different than uh, the, the traditional novel. And then, you know, you go on to Nimona, like 
is uh, protagonists kind of break archetypes. Like even through, you know, my 20s and 30s, I was still like discovering new ways to tell stories with comics. And that's clearly still going on with me because I'm like so excited about all these new books. Anyway, um, the question was like, what makes comics special to me? So I'm a teacher, so I'll be kind of academic here. Uh, okay, first there's the visual appeal of cartoons in general. Like it's so emotional. It's all about like the face, like the Disney idea of appeal. Kids can instantly connect them. And then it's, at least for me, when you get into the language of comics, there's like this balance of poetry and like naturalistic dialogue that's so special to comics. It's, it's clear in a way a lot of novels aren't so you can introduce young readers to like complicated topics if you if you're savvy enough and then there's just the way it all comes together and i'm stealing something from scott mcleod's understanding comic comics a, a book every library should have every, yeah. book, every library should have understanding comics and you really need to read that book amazing yeah. yes exactly so like you have that art and you have that text but the magic is like the 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 panel right that's like what makes a comic special so the way you have like these panels in sequence it instantly triggers a young reader's mind to try to figure out how this story flows and with any visual artistic field there's this sort of relationship the artist needs to develop a positive and negative space and that exists narratively also so like when a kid is reading a graphic novel they're seeing the story the creator is presenting but the story that they're telling themselves is happening like between those panels and that idea is just so like truly magical to me and that's where a kid becomes a storyteller and whether you follow that into making your own comics or not like you're becoming a storyteller like every time you read a comic so love it uh, that's that's my thing now, while Taylor brings up the slides, uh, we'll yeah. mention that your first book with LBYR was Shark Summer, set on Martha's Vineyard, and it involves filmmaking and a mechanical shark. And it took me back to my own middle grade summers, plus also the time we went to Universal Studios and I saw the Jaws shark. So mm -hmm. yes, we did need a bigger boat. Uh, wait for the slides, Taylor. Okay, there we go. Almost there, there we are. <laughs> so coming on 1025, Spirit Week is sort of, it's not a successor to uh, Shark Summer, but it's in that same sort of cinematic uh, feel of you are engaging a story. Now, this is the story of an aspiring teen engineer. Her name is Susie and she is engaged one summer to be tutor to a young man named Danny. And they are going to be at the Underlook Hotel. You got it. Got it, folks, Underlook Hotel, where there are secrets and shenanigans uh, and mysteries are uh, abounding. So let's net get into the next slide. So what did you do in this story that you, with the graphic format that you could not have done with prose alone or even art alone? Well, I, I think with comics, and of course I'm biased here, like there, you know, in, in visual media, there's this idea of show instead of tell, like how can I present you with a feeling of something and have you interpret that, right? Like this engagement with the reader. And uh, it really helped me add layers to this story that would have been like maybe too obvious, obvious if I wrote it in prose. So like both Shark Summer and Spirit Week exist in kind of like a meta world where uh, famous iconic films like, you know, maybe Jaws or The Shining or whatever uh, are kind of part of our, the universe of these stories. And the characters are moving around and influencing the stories and engaging with them in the same way, like kids engage with the pop culture of the previous generation, like the internet just kind of flattens all culture and just throws it all at you at once. And like, who knows when anything happened <laughs> chronologically. And I feel like this book is kind of a, a bit about that. So visually there's all these moments that if you're an older reader who has like, you know, you're a film buff maybe, or you've at least seen The Shining or Jaws, you're getting this cinematic feel, but as like a young reader, you're maybe sensing that a little bit, but you're also uh, getting this great adventure story about these kids. So I, I wanted it to be a story that uh, parents and kids could kind of discover different things in and like all great books that I read when I was a kid there was always something that made me want to 
engage with the topic a little deeper than where the author takes it, like a roller coaster that lets you off at a different point along the ride than where you began. Like, that's a great book to me. And I tried to bring those elements, uh, you know, into this story. And hopefully you can kind of see it, especially in like quiet moments, like in this spread, right? Like you have those, the elevator doors, like even if you haven't seen The Shining, you've probably seen a meme of those red elevator doors. Uh, so, you know, I can do that with a comic. I can just drop in these visuals and uh, they can enrich the story or they could just be passed over if, if you don't get it, which is cool. Well, Ira, thanks so much for joining us. We'll take the slides down for a moment while we say farewell to you. Uh, gentle persons out there, Ira Marks is the author, creator, genius person behind Shark Summer, which is available now in both hardcover and paperback. It's on the Texas Mavericks list, so you know it's high quality. And coming up this October 25th, Spirit Week. Red rum, red rum, red rum. Also available simultaneously in hardcover and paperback. Thanks, Ira. Hi, everyone. Thank you. And now Taylor's going to bring back the slides and we're going to move on into what I, I think three books that really express the range of what we're trying to achieve at LBYR. Yes, it's a little bit of a tone shift coming up, but I think it's important and valuable. The first of these is Mohammed Najem, War Reporter. This is a tremendous nonfiction book written by Mohammed Najem, who got out his iPhone when his town in Syria started to be bombed during the Civil War. It's about a teen telling the truth and we'll go flip through the slides real quick so you can see the interiors. He's been helped in this story. His family has been relocated away from Syria, so he is safe. But this is a powerful memoir about telling the truth to power. Uh, then we'll slip through the next slide and move on to Numb to This from Kendra Neely, also available simultaneously hardcover and paperback. This is really close to my heart as somebody from Oregon who was living in Oregon at the time of a school shooting in Roseburg, Oregon at a community college. Unfortunately, this is a very timely book. The book does not detail the shooting itself. It is about the post-traumatic stress of surviving and dealing with the trauma. Uh, if we can go through a couple of the interiors, uh, Kendra and her artists have really done this in a very sensitive, moving, respectful way that is respectful to her story, but to the stories of all the other people who were there that day. And we'll continue on to our last book. Yes, again, a little bit of a tone shift, but I wanted to end on a high note. Terry's Crew from Terry Crews. This is just a fun romp of a middle grade book going through the interiors. It's coming up on November 8th. It's a middle grade story about Terry and his friends, that it is teamwork and friendship that gets us through the day and helps us flourish throughout the day. Yet another slide, please, Taylor. And then it, it's just a really treme tremendous, lovely book. And I'm so happy you guys were here and let me share with you. I think I got it in my time. At least they're not yelling at me and ding, ding, dinging on me. And I think that's DHL at my front door. So thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and we'll see you soon. Thank you so much, Victoria. And thank you also to Ira for being here today. And a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit www.booklistonline.com slash webinars where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like the ones you see here. July is Read Graphic Month here at Booklist, and this year we are going bigger than ever. Check out the Booklist blog to enter our sweepstakes. Register for our graphic novels webinars, including a presentation about comics and censorship with the uh, ALA Graphic Novels and Comics Roundtable Committee. Listen to our Read Graphic playlist on our YouTube channel, and of course, read this year's Guide to Graphic Novels in Libraries issue, which is focusing on all things manga. It's also longer than last year, which is pretty fun. Now you can share Booklist love with everyone connected to your school district library system or higher learning institution. Booklist Online Unlimited offers just that, unlimited simultaneous access to 30 years worth of review and article archives, plus digital editions of Booklist, Booklinks, Booklist Guide to Graphic Novels and Libraries, and Booklist Reader. For pricing and other questions, visit www.booklistonline.com slash subscribe. Have you heard? Booklist Reader, our new magazine that offers reading recommendations to patrons of all ages, is coming to print this January. Go to www.bit.ly slash booklistreader in print to find out how you can order print copies in bulk for your library. 
already have a Booklist subscription, you can share the latest issue now. Go to our website for more details. And we are very excited to share that Booklist, Booklinks, and Booklist Reader recently joined the Overdrive Magazines program in partnership with Zinio and are available for our patrons to read in Libby. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar and one more huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Phoenix International, Simon & Schuster, Yen Press, Tuttle, Scholastic, and Little Brown Books for Young Readers. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.